Add shellacans. His articles have been published in just about every country where pigeon racing takes place. What Ad writes carries weight as he is a champion with a capital C. What follows is a conversation that took place with Ad ten years ago. I'm sure you will all agree he was well ahead of his game. How long have you been in the pigeon sport? I started my career since I could walk in fact in the 50s. Everybody here had pigeons, my neighbours, my family, my uncles. So it would um, be strange if I wouldn't, would not go into this sport. My first successes came before I was married with uh, birds from uh, my neighbour. I was a rich guy who bought pigeons everywhere and I didn't have any money. So I scraped the lofts over there and uh, got some pigeons free. There's also some chance of blood in it then. Later, uh, I'll make a big step now to 1976. I got two eggs from the Jensen brothers. And uh, one of them uh, won the six National Orleans in very hot weather. Uh, region that was 10 minutes ahead. I thought, what's going on? Uh, uh, these pigeons indeed must be good. From this bird, I bred two children, which are pretty famous in Holland, the yearling and the sister good yearling, the good yearling sister good yearling. Yeah. Okay. The sister good yearling was made to the son of young Merckx in 1985, and the first baby on the first national audience in 1985. But the Janssen hen, now I go back to the Janssen hen of 1976, yeah. was mated to a cock of Hofkens direct. In those days uh, I had some auctions, but I stopped it, but because writing in magazines and auctioning birds is two things that can't go together. No, it's very difficult. You can't, you can't yeah. be neutral. But in those days I didn't write, uh, and I had some auctions. I had one of Hofkins here in my town. It was a complete failure, because Hofkins refused to pay any publicity, propaganda, and it failed. I was so embarrassed, ashamed. I didn't take my 10% and I said, give me some business free, which he did. Then I got one of his birds, made it that with the Janssen hen, and that's the parents of my good yearling and the sister good yearling. Sister good yearling was mated to a son of young Merckx in 1985, and the same year, the first baby uh, gave me my first National Orleans in 1985. I also imported uh, some birds from a guy, Joske Smits in Zandhoven in 1969. He won the first three provincial with three brothers. I went there to uh, buy babies of the same couple. They were pretty expensive, but I bought them and it was a good move. This was partly Huiskes van Rielderblad. It was the first business I ever bought. Later I bought more, many pigeons. Any bad ones, but this was a good one. Back, I uh, give you an example. In 1997, uh, 1996, in the fall, people come here to buy pigeons, and I had this beautiful blue cock. 
which uh, people could buy. And he said, can I buy this cock? They asked me. He said, yeah. What's it off? I said, it's one a pigeon called Fast Blue, which is pretty famous in Holland. Why do you sell the ass? Because they uh, didn't win a prize. I said, okay. Give me another bird. And this happened again and again. Nobody wanted this bird because I was so honest to say it didn't win a prize. I thought by myself that I'm not going to kill such a bird of such a good origin. I kept it and last year as a yearling, a super. So you need some luck. And the same thing happened to uh, to Clark, the father of the 613, the best bird he ever had. His father is named the Knook. He wanted to sell, but nobody wanted it. To Mr. Hooper, the same thing happened. The father of his Sony, this is called, uh, what's the name of it? Anyway, anyway, it was the father of Sony, he, a young artist. Nobody wanted it. He wanted to sell this, but I'm not going to kill this pigeon. You need some luck. It's not all luck, of course, but without any luck, uh, you can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. You say luck plays an important part in the pigeon sport. I agree with you, but pigeon fanciers, they must have to make their own luck, yeah? Of course, but I mean luck in breeding that one super bird. Yeah. Uh, you have a couple that gives one super and never gives another one. Yeah. So breeding, of course you have more chance with, 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 with 20 good old birds, but you always uh, need luck. I think the champion pigeon makes the breeding couple, and not not the other way around. Yeah, the breeding, the breeding couple, couple doesn't, doesn't make the champ. No. The champ makes the parents. Yeah, suddenly that good pigeon is there. And they say, oh, it's of this and that, yeah. and then you have the breeding couple first. <laughs> that's my opinion. Yeah, that's, that's a very good point. Uh, when will you couple your breeders together? Uh, all my birds are coupled the end of November. Um, also the Bitterwood Cocks, the races, not so much because of the babies that I want early breads, but it's a better system because they are uh, separated again when the babies are about 16 days old and that uh, delays the mold. Uh, when there is this separation, so now they are separated, um, I remade them again, so end of March. And then uh, up till, say, beginning of July, they don't have any problem with the mold. No. With the classical system, which about 10, 20 years ago everybody practiced, then they started mating up early February, um, around the baby's eggs, and then you get problems with the mold uh, middle of June. So that's the main reason of the fact that I made my races so early is the mold. Yeah, uh, you say you take the young pigeons away at 16 days, do you put, when you put, when you take the young pigeons away, is it the hens away from the cocks with one youngster and then leave one youngster with the cocks? No, or? Um, the hens with all the babies. Yeah. Yeah. And at what age are the babies when you take the hens away to their own? Um, well, <coughs> that's a good question because it always, uh, you can read in all the books, it's three, uh, four weeks is the ideal age. But throughout the years, I, uh, it has come down with me about uh, three weeks, 22, 23 days old, no problem at all. The younger the better, I think. Yeah, yeah. they make a better pigeon, they, they yeah. can get them. They must be um, independent soon, learn how to eat yeah. and drink, and uh, I think it's, it's, it's bad to wait till they are four weeks old or older. The younger the better. The younger the better, yeah. yeah. And how will you feed your pigeons when you're breeding? Um, with uh, the races, nothing special, like everybody, beginning of the week, light food. Uh, the end of the week, uh, pretty much uh, mice, corn. And the babies, uh, youngsters, I think that's important because, uh, anyway, in Holland, most people make a mistake. They f feed them too heavy too much protein, too, yeah. too many peas and uh, youngsters that's um, a lot of diet in it, about uh, one third. I think it's very important. Yeah. Uh, you feed the youngsters say, a th like say a third diet mix and yeah. a third good food. Um, in the UK a lot of people 
also like you said in Holland, you know, they're feeding a lot of peas yeah. for, for the young pigeons. Uh, they believe that this is making them grow stronger. Well, um, in the beginning it's good, eh? uh, till they are two weeks old, they get a lot yeah. of peas. Yeah. And that is a special young bird mixtures you can buy, eh? yeah. but if you give it to your young bird team, you don't win a prize. Yeah. The flesh is blue, it don't fly, and uh, but till they are eight weeks or ten weeks old, it's, it's real good. But then gradually, lighter and lighter. Larger. Before you start playing with the young pigeons on the races, yeah. when it's the time when they're just exercising around the loft and finding their own place, um, how how will you feed the pigeons then? It's always the. From the um, beginning of May, it's always the same. It's yeah. one uh, third diet mix, yeah. one uh, third normal, and one third young bird mixture with those uh, peas, yeah. which is compensated by, by the diet, by the and then diet. always uh, the same. And which is very important is uh, everyday fresh grit in the purchase. I grit. I think grit is the most important thing birds need far more important than uh, vitamins and stuff why do you never read this why do you don't you see advertisements on grit because there's no money in it so why should we <laughs> advertise it's a waste of money but grit is real real important yeah and the funny thing is it may not be in the in the loft because then they don't pick it it becomes dust on it uh, and when the grit is dusty they don't pick it so it's refreshed every day a little bit of grit and every perch, some small seeds. Grit is really important, especially for babies, but also for old birds. Yeah. So you don't put your grit in little pots then? You uh, now, the uh, <coughs> there's also a pot. Yeah. But I see the how they eat from it, and when you give them fresh, they pick it. But I want them to pick grit as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, We've been talking about your young birds. Mm. Uh, can you give us a little insight to what you do with your young pigeons? Yeah. Um, of course, darkening. I have darkened my birds since 1978. I always kept the secret. Uh, I had some friends. They also darkened. And we clean up every, we destroyed the races. <laughs> and then a lot of gossip about drugging, etc. Yeah. Nobody talked, we knew we had an advantage, yeah, maybe it wasn't fair, but it's in sports, it's like that. But gradually it leaked out. These friends also had friends, so they also had friends. And then uh, about five years ago they began to talk about this. I said, don't worry, you also need the pigeons. Yeah. Uh, this darkening system has been changed throughout the years, in the beginning, what I did was, the principle is very simple, eh? the winter you move forward, uh, that's the principle. Uh, molting is a process of um, hormones which are uh, influenced by light and dark and by cortisone. Eh? You can influence the molten uh, by cortisone or light and dark. Yeah. Eh? And um, in the beginning I started uh, darkening them when they were four weeks old, the end of January till uh, the middle of June, but gradually I changed this, I improved the system, and now I look, the last few uh, years from absolute minimum, that's now only six weeks, less problems with coli, less losses, in fall uh, less problems, I think darkening them from end of uh, January till July, it's not good you ask for problems and people who say uh, as young they are not so good anymore I think they make this mistake you shouldn't document them that long how long then my system end of March till uh, early May but I must say if you want to race till October yeah. uh, it's too short it all depends on when is your time in what months do you, do you want to dominate yeah. the races? Huh? Uh, how dark? Also a point of discussion. I think uh, 
it, when you hear the pigeons in the loft, it's not dark enough. So they should not move. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and some people say they must be able to find the water, but I don't take chances. I don't want to lose a whole year. And losses, I never suffered losses. Mm -hmm. It's also, uh, I think, the roof of my loft is uh, like this. So when I darken it, the air can still be... Uh, but when you have a flat ceiling, you may have problems, uh, respiratory problems. Uh, when you close your loft off and have heating on, then you, you really get in big trouble. You absolutely sure get the red throats and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then we come to another point, the loft construction, which is very important. Once we were at the friend of mine and me, a very famous Belgian founder, he heard about our results with babies and said, why don't you come and look uh, to my pigeons, because with youngsters, the birds were real good, but I just, at average, we went there together, the guy was Case Bozo, real good fancy. And then this famous man said, there are not many pigeons in the loft, are there? It was a loft about five meters, and there are five or six birds in it. Super health, unbelievable. Yeah. And then we looked at each other. We didn't say a word because this man was so famous, we didn't want to embarrass him. And on the way back home, we said, that was his problem. Not enough birds, there was no atmosphere. No. So in the birds must, must feel at ease. They must feel as if they are wanted. They must feel good. Uh, that's also the reason I don't clean. If some birds um, want to make a nest in every evening with a scraper, you put it away, it's not good. So when I destroy the home, won't you? Yeah. And um, then about the system, the worst thing you can do is to have a special system throughout the season. It's impossible for three months to destroy, week after week, to destroy the races. I do because I do not have one fixed system. Yeah. It's several systems. So what I mean is 10 uh, or 12 weeks on widowhood, separated sexes doesn't work. Yeah. But three nests behind each other doesn't work either. So it's some weeks the sexes are separated, sometimes they are on nest, then again separated, but don't do a thing for 12 weeks on a row, it doesn't work. Yeah. That's my opinion. Maybe uh, there are better systems, but uh, those who have, say, this system is better, should compare their results with mine, see which is best. <laughs> huh? Motivation, you believe, that is the key yeah. point. Yeah, when the birds, when I'm in the yard, the birds see me, not now, now there's not much discipline, they come like hell, and everybody in this area know how good my birds trap. It's not a bird, that's a farm show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, people who say, uh, my babies, uh, I have a family of birds that are so scared. It's silly. They are made scared by the farm show. There are no scared pigeons. Yeah. For youngsters, the loft is even more important than for old birds. Birds must, be, uh, must feel comfortable. If you have a loft with, say, 50 birds and 50 Purchase, you definitely don't win a prize. They must be able to sit wherever they want, feel comfortable, especially what we call those chapels like this. They are very bad. Uh, you can't grab the birds, they can, it's easy to escape. Here they can sit everywhere. Every evening, they give them some small seats, some grits. And what will happen after some weeks, when I come in here, when I, even when I enter the loft, the birds look at me. So they want to say, hey, are you there? Give us some small seats. And they fly to my hand. There's some other people, poor young bird racers, when they stretch out a hand, the bird's gone. Here's just the opposite way. If, yeah. And then if you hear some small seats, and the bird goes there. Uh, it's artificially made smaller to uh, make, to prevent there is an escape route. They hardly can fly away. And uh, I think it's an absolute necessity that you uh, can grab every bird with one hand. When you need two hands, not to talk about hands like that, that's wrong. So the birds you must be able to grab with one, with one hand. 
the straw uh, is easy for me, uh, saves a lot of work, and I think it's better for the birds. One problem if you have coccidiosis or uh, pilot typhoid, you have a real problem. So you must be a little bit um, careful, but the nights are warmer. Uh, I tried it out some years ago. One section I scraped daily, the other section I didn't scrape at all, I had straw. I had a door in between I opened, and in the evening I looked where the pigeons were. And they were in the dirty loft, which was a better loft. Where the pigeons were was a better loft, of course. And then, uh, that's some years ago, then I had straw everywhere. Um, it's important the temperatures won't get too low at uh, night, so I can shut this off. And also here, so uh, now I combine two things, uh, keep the temperature in, the warmth, and uh, I darken the birds. In very hot weather, I also in the daytime uh, lower this to, to prevent the loft from becoming too, uh, too warm. But there, uh, it's not fancy, it's all very simple, uh, very cheap. But uh, birds don't see, uh, they, they don't recognize a fancy loft. They must feel at ease. At this moment, yeah, it's very bad weather. Mm -hmm. uh, just some babies, they, uh, which are very young. But uh, in one or two months, they all be shaped up and uh, they will do different. Uh, well, the straw on the floor at the moment is quite dirty. Yeah. Um, Will you change this straw before you start to face? <coughs> yeah, uh, once now it's also there's much humidity. In a couple of weeks from now, I will change it and it's dry. Then temperatures are higher. It will be dried outside and then it will be there for the rest of the year. Yeah. Now you see pretty much uh, uh, droppings, but then uh, no droppings anymore. And do you use any products to keep your young pigeons in health during the week? Like, do you treat them on a regular basis for trichomonosis, or do you use anything basically to keep them in health, or do you find that they have their own natural immunity and they're coping with the stress yeah. by themselves? Yeah, nobody, uh, as well, believe uh, me, but I hardly give anything. Uh, this time of the year, a uh, little bit uh, yucker. It's lactobacillus in it, which for the immune system. Yeah. Uh, for respiratory uh, problems, nothing at all. Yeah. And uh, trichomona is not a certain si system. When I see something is wrong, uh, but it happens uh, for two months on a row, nothing at all, or three months, and yeah. sometimes twice in a month, you must see everything. But I don't believe in every three weeks uh, yeah. for coccidiosis, every four weeks for uh, yeah. trichomona. When the situation asks for it, then give something. Yeah. When there's a problem, yeah. sort it out. At the right moment, not one day too soon, not one day too late. Give the right medication, the right doses, the right duration, yeah. at the right time. Yeah. And for your old pigeon system? Uh, I tried to give nothing at all, but I have everything available. Yeah. I have everything in the house. Yeah, and when the situation asked for it, I medicated them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And in my best years, I gave least of that stuff. Yeah. But sometimes you have to. Well, of course, yes. Yeah. Like yeah. us, when we fall sick, we yeah. go see the doctor. Yeah. We don't go every week. <laughs> We've spoken about the young pigeons. Uh, perhaps now you can just add lighteners with your old pigeons. Yeah. yeah. That's very simple. The bit of hood system. Uh, there are no seed, they do nothing special like others do at the beginning of the week, light food, uh, no vitamins, nothing. Uh, the only thing uh, which is different from most people, I guess, is uh, I never show hands. I wouldn't know why. You only make, make the birds nervous, and after three or four weeks, they know what's going on. Uh, what the basket is, is in fact what the hen does. They, they know the basket the same. Uh, it's uh, uh, in Dutch, geconditioneerde uh, uh, reflexen, conditioned reflexes from Pavlov. You may uh, have heard about this guy. So, uh, the basket will do. Uh, they know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, I think that uh, the reason why most people have poor results in the end of June is always shown the hands again and again. You know, they make them nervous all the time. I never show them. <coughs> For the rest, uh, yeah, when they come home, uh, they can eat as much as they want. There's also grit. And then you can in fact see how important grit is. The uh, famous vet, Dr. Le Milieu, I think he's the best. He once told me, when the birds come home from a real heart race, have some grit in the cell and some food. See what a pigeon does. It will first eat some grit. It was true. So the day the birds come home, they can have what they want. And then the first days of the week, um, a little food. And I try them to eat them as much as possible the day before basketing. The day of basketing, when they are still very hungry, you made a mistake. Uh, when the crop is full of water, you made a mistake also. So, uh, yeah, in fact, nothing real special. And I also raise hands, and that's a special system. Uh, I have two lofts real small lofts. One section they breed and then uh, end of April the cocks go in the aviary and hence go in a section next to this. They can't land on the bottom, I'll show you. They can't see each other. Yeah. From there I let the pigeons out and late in the evening they fly for in the beginning they don't fly it out at all, but you have to teach them with a ball or something. And yeah. after, after two uh, weeks they fly for one hour. They come in uh, then in the section where they normally have, uh, have bread before. I feed them there and they go in the other loft and sit on the whole day on perches. And uh, not all uh, hens accept this system. When you start with eight, after some weeks, some uh, they don't accept it, no. but those who uh, pick it up, uh, you can have uh, super results with them. The last four races of this season, I won every week the first prize with a hen, which is very strange because uh, normally it's always some cocks before, but now it was hens. And one of these hen won three firsts, the same hen was provincial champion in 1996. It's an average of 11,000 birds per race, it won average the 14th prize. It was brother and sister was the first and second provincial ace. They would have won five weeks on a row, the first two prizes. Two, but I beat them myself, yeah, I won one, two, yeah. three, four, five. Yeah, if I didn't beat them myself, those two birds, and which it was in many magazines, it never happened befo uh, before. But I was also curious what will happen next year. As all birds, super again. Super. Yeah. So, all those people who say that babies who have been darkened are poor old birds, they make mistakes with darkening. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. They're, they're not uh, using the darkness system. I, I think they dark, most of them will darken too long. Yeah. You're also famous throughout the world for your many pigeon articles. My first contact with the name Adskalakans mm. was the Janssen book, mm. or the Janssen Bible, as so many people call it. Yeah. Uh, what made you write this book? Yeah, it's in fact this one bird that I got from them in 1976 that won uh, six national leagues. Six national, uh, it's, it's hard, I can tell you, to be in the first 25 years. And later the babies, the first national, the third national, the second national, the offspring of this one bird. I thought, what's going on? It's unbelievable. And then I thought all the Janssen birds were like that. If you get one such a super bird. And uh, I thought, well, I did everything in my life. I started a new pigeon magazine. I wrote in Japanese, uh, uh, Taiwanese magazines in America. But the one thing I did not uh, do is write a book. I thought, why, why not write a book about the uh, Janssen brothers? And uh, I did this in 1984. And I also, I talked about this to friends and I, I felt this would be a great success. And it was uh, yeah, the first day the Holland edition was sold out. It was not me, it was, I think, the subject. 
it was it was a, yeah. a gap in the market, uh, yeah. the Janssens, and uh, I never regretted uh, this. I think they deserved this book. They had such a great impact on pigeon sport, the Janssen brothers. And what was also uh, intriguing, I think, is the way they lived, the simple lofts. They were very simple people, knew nothing about medication, despite that for half a century be so good. Dad, I brought my Janssen book with me. I wonder if you'd be so kind to sign it for me. Yeah, I've never done this before. <laughs> Just kidding. No problem. Don't give it away because it's completely sold out. I get so many calls for Janssen books. Yeah. Since it's not going to be published again. No, it's too much work, and I, I'm so busy. It, uh, no. no part two. No part two, definitely not. No. Okay, it's been great being here.